Today on Timothy in Japan, we talk about the Japan Rail Pass. The Japan Rail Pass is an exclusive ticket only available to non-Japanese citizens. For one off fee, this ticket allows customers to use any trains run by the JR company as much as they like with a few exceptions which we will go through in this video. The first step is actually looking into if a JR pass is actually going to be right for you. Now what may be right for you may not be right for some. If you're planning just staying in one city such as Tokyo or maybe Osaka, I can tell you now the JR pass is probably not going to be for you as you'd probably really only be taking local trains and local trains really don't cost a lot and it would be easier and cheaper to pay for all these trips individually. Now if you're planning on moving around and using the bullet train aka Shinkansen the JR pass is absolutely perfect as Shinkansen tickets can actually get quite expensive. They're pretty much just under £100 just for one way, meaning a trip from Tokyo to Osaka and Osaka back to Tokyo would cost you almost £200. And a seven day JR pass is only £189. Now I'm sure you're asking, Tim, how do I get one of these JR passes? Well, it's just a very few simple steps. First off, you just find a website that sells a JR pass. Then pick how many days you want and then pick if you want a regular pass or a green pass. Essentially the green pass means you can go and sit in the first class. Once you are done, the exchange order will be delivered to your house. Remember to keep hold of this and definitely do take this to Japan with you. You are going to need this. Once you're in Japan, you can exchange your exchange order, try saying that fast three times, at one of these ticket office. Uh, the full list is coming up now on screen. Of course, the most popular place to get your JR pass is at the airport, but I will warn you, the line gets absolutely humongous. Um, even here, you can see quickly in the video, when I went, the line was huge. I actually didn't need the JR pass that day, so I decided to go and pick it up later on at one of the other ticket office. So let's see how that went. I visited the JR office in UNO station. As you can see, they have their own separate area for JR passes. I got there about 10 minutes after the office actually opened and there already was quite a line. Not as big as line as the airport, so I had made the right choice. Remember to bring your exchange order and your passport. If not, it's a long walk of shame back to the hotel. First off, a lady with a trolley came down. She checked to see if my exchange order and passport were all in order, which they were. Now I just have to wait for the last part. After about another 15 minute wait, it was finally my turn. I went up to the desk with all my paperwork. After this, I was handed my very own JR pass. The cool thing about the JR pass now is it can actually fit through the barriers, meaning you don't have to go over to the staff on the far side, which sometimes can be quite a big line to get through. So that is actually a really cool new feature they have. I was also given options to book further trains throughout my travels. A lot of people are actually up here booking lots of trains and this seemed to be what was taking a lot of time as lots of people were like booking practically every train for their trip. But um, I already knew the Shinkansen had some unreserved seating, so I knew I was going to be okay because I wasn't sure what time I would actually be taking the Shinkansen. So I didn't actually book any time slots. I'll show you now the many ways you can reserve tickets. The first way is actually doing it online. You do have to sign up and I personally haven't done this yet, but before I've been told this worked pretty well. The next option and actually the option I picked was going up to the ticket machines right next to the Shinkansen. Literally all you have to do was scan your JR pass in 
and uh, put your passport number in. So do remember to actually have your passport with you. Or as I said, it'll be a long walk back to the hotel. It essentially gives you the option to reserve a seat on any Shinkansen that is valid for the JR Pass. If you don't like talking to machines and want to talk to a real person, there is also a reservation office, normally right near the machines. So you can go and do it this way. I just ended up doing it the machine way because I essentially just found it easier. Right, now you have your own JR Pass. There's only a few simple things to remember. Of course, this is only valid for things that are actually run by the JR company. This means stuff like metros, uh, they're private companies. So yes, you're gonna have to pay separately for these tickets. And yes, this unfortunately means those Thomas the Tank Engine replica trains, they're owned by another company. You're not gonna get a free ride on Thomas the Tank Engine um, on one of these. Also, there are two Shinkansens that the JR path does not allow you to go on and they are Nozomi and Misuso aka the really really fast ones yeah so make sure you don't get on any of these two because you will be made to pay the fare to the next station and if the next station is quite far away it's going to be quite a bit of money considering that you have essentially saved a load of money with the JR pass don't worry you can go on the slightly slower routes on both of these trains and that's it that's pretty much everything you should have to know about the JR pass I actually do have a video coming up all about my trip on the Shinkansen so please do make sure to click that subscribe button if you want to see that and hopefully maybe we'll have a few other train or Japan train related videos uh, in this trip so yeah please do look out for them uh, don't forget that we're on twitter at anime uk and we're also on instagram at anime uk zero anyway hopefully you have enjoyed and i'll see you again soon bye